Hi everybody, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, we're going to talk about the two main types of neurotransmitters that neurons use to communicate with each other, as well as the effects that these types of neurotransmitters have on their resting membrane potential, which remember is their normal membrane charge. When we're talking about the two types of neurotransmitters that neurons use to talk to each other, these neurotransmitters are going to open up chemically gated ion channels. Let's underline, highlight, star, chemically gated ion channels. Remember from our discussion that a gated channel is not always open, but it's opened by a chemical key in this case. So neurotransmitters that are spit out from one neuron to another are going to open up special kinds of ion channels. Remember that ions have a charge. When those ions come in, they're either going to make the membrane charge more positive, that's what depolarize means, or more negative, that's what hyperpolarize means. So when we're talking about our types of neurotransmitters, the first type of neurotransmitter are called excitatory neurotransmitters. Once you've written the word excitatory, I want you to underline, highlight, star that depolarize the membrane charge. An excitatory neurotransmitter is going to make the charge on my neuron's plasma membrane go up. It's going to excite the neuron, make them ready to talk to their neighbor. So the membrane charge goes up, it depolarizes the membrane, and it creates this small change in charge that we abbreviate an EPSP. An EPSP is an abbreviation for an excitatory postsynaptic potential. Excitatory means the charge went up. Postsynaptic tells me what neuron I'm talking about. Remember that the postsynaptic neuron is the neuron that we find after the synapse. This is the neuron that receives the message. That message is excitatory and it makes its membrane charge go up. That's an EPSP, a change in charge caused by an excitatory neurotransmitter. But sometimes when neurons talk to each other, they send inhibitory neurotransmitters. Inhibitory neurotransmitters are neurotransmitters that hyperpolarize the membrane. Let's underline, highlight, star, hyperpolarize the membrane. When I use that word hyperpolarize, Remember that that means the membrane charge is going down. I'm making it even more negative. When I make my membrane charge even more negative, this makes it harder for neurons to talk to each other. Just like we had EPSPs for excitatory neurotransmitters, we also have IPSPs for inhibitory neurotransmitters. Remember, the, the postsynaptic neuron is the neuron who receives the message. If that message made their membrane charge go down, we call it an inhibitory change in their membrane charge. IPSP, the membrane charge goes down. We can see this when we look at the changes in membrane charge caused by a message. These two graphs that we see here are showing us the membrane potential. Or remember in class we talked about that as the membrane charge for the two types of messages we can see. In my first picture over here, I see a neuron at resting potential. That's its normal charge. Remember that neurons are normally uh, negative 70 millivolts. When it received a message, notice that its membrane charge got a little bit less negative or in other words, it got a little bit more positive. When this happens, we call this depolarization. The membrane charge got a little bit, a little bit more positive. When my membrane charge gets more positive, we consider that an EPSP, an excitatory postsynaptic potential. A small change in my charge that went up. If we look at our picture on the right, notice that this neuron was hanging out at resting membrane potential. It got a message and that message made its membrane charge go down or get more negative. 
when the membrane charge on a neuron gets more negative, we call that hyperpolarization, meaning that the charge has become more negative than usual. It's even lower than negative 70. When my membrane charge goes down, we consider that an IPSP, an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. When we are looking at these two types of changes that happen in the membrane charge, we can also predict which ions are moving to make these charges happen. And for us to do that, we need to go back to our favorite salty banana. Let's remember from class that your cells are like a banana. Remember that bananas have a whole lot of potassium on the inside, but our cells aren't just normal bananas, they are salty bananas. So on the outside of this banana, we have sodium ions and we have chloride ions. When I open up channels for these ions, they're always gonna move from where there's a lot of them to where there's a little of them. So when I open a channel for sodium, sodium is gonna go inside. And when sodium goes inside, it's bringing its positive charge with it. Sodium ions moving into our cell is one way for us to make an EPSP, a positive change in charge. When I open up a channel for chloride, chloride has a lot outside, which means it's going to also want to go inside. But chloride has a negative charge. When chloride moves, my membrane charge goes down. Moving chloride ions into a neuron is one way to hyperpolarize its membrane. The last ion that moves with these types of ion channels is potassium. And potassium, I have a whole lot of inside my cell. This means that when I open a channel for it, potassium is gonna go out. Potassium with its positive charges leaving the cell actually makes the membrane charge go down. It actually hyperpolarizes the membrane. So the other way to hyperpolarize the membrane, either open a channel for chloride, like we said before, or open a channel for potassium, which is also going to make my membrane charge go down. With these types of membrane charge changes, with these EPSPs or IPSPs. Please make sure we know, number one, are we depolarizing or hyperpolarizing? Number two, this terminology, EPSP or IPSP. And number three, make sure we know which types of ion channels will lead to these kinds of changes in my membrane charge. An excitatory neurotransmitter is going to open up an ion channel for sodium, a chemically gated ion channel for sodium, whereas an inhibitory neurotransmitter could open up an ion channel for chloride or an ion channel for potassium.